Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said, in another work of his, Al-Rad ala al-Jahmiya wal Zanadiqa. He mentioned an all praise is due, due for Allah, who in every age and intervals between the prophets raises up a group from the people of knowledge, who call the misguided to guidance, yet patiently bearing ill treatment and harm. With the book of Allah, they give life to the dead. And by the light of Allah, they give sight to the blind. How many a person killed by Iblis have they revived? How many a people astray and wandering have they guided? How beautiful has been their effect upon the people and how vile the people have been towards them. These ulama, they expel from, they expel from the book of Allah alterations of those going beyond bounds, the false claims of the liars, the false claims of the ignorant. These innovators who uphold the banner of innovation and they let loose the trials and discord who differ about the book of Allah and they agree to oppose the book of Allah those who speak about Allah and His book without knowledge, they argue about that which is ambiguous in the book and they deceive the ignorant ones with these ambiguities. We seek refuge in Allah from the trials of the misguided. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said this. This is the state of the ulama. When a person says, Wallahi, I don't make taqlid, give me evidence from the kitab and the sunnah. I don't want to hear Ahmad say, Anta muqtadi. What do you mean you don't want to hear from Ahmad? He says, I don't want to hear from Shafi'i. I don't want to hear from Barbahari. I don't want to hear from Marwazi. Bring me an ayah or bring me a hadith. Why do they, why do they do this? Because now they can put their own slant upon the meaning of the hadith. So they don't want to go to Ibn Abdul Bar. They don't want to go to Ibn Taymiyyah unless he agrees with their hawa. They don't want to go to Imam Ahmad. They don't want to go to Marwazi. They don't want to go to Imam Tabari. They don't want to go to the aqid of Imam al-Bukhari. They don't want to go to Sufyan al-Thawri or Hamad ibn Zayd or Hamad ibn Salama or Nu'aym bin Hamad. They don't want to go to them, Barakallahu Fikum. They want to say, Ya Akhi, bring me the evidence for that from the Qur'an. I will only take from that as a deception to deceive the general folk. Our manhaj is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Khayrun nas arni thumma alladheena yalunahum. Thumma alladheena yalunahum. The best of mankind is my generation, then those who come after them, then those who come after them. So we take from the Qurur al the most excellent of generations. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزال ضائفة من أمة ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم لذلك. That the Prophet ﷺ said that they will never cease to be. The hadith in, in the Sunan, Sunan, Sunan of Imam Tirmidhi and in other, in, and in other books of hadith and Sunan, where the Prophet ﷺ said they will never cease to be a group of my ummah. Manifestly upon the truth. Zahirina al haq What does that mean that they are zahirin? Or al in a narration, al haq zahirin. Upon the truth they are manifest and apparent. Meaning they are not hidden, barakallah. Our ulama are not hidden. Ask Ahlul Bida, do you know Bin Baz? They say, we know Bin Baz. They know. Ask any Sufi Quburi who knows anything about the science. Do you know Al-Albani? Yes, we know Al-Albani. Our ulama are not hidden. Even if the ulama hide themselves, Allah brings them out. Sheikh Muqbil, rahimahullahu ta'ala. Living in a village, in a mud hut, with no electricity for the most of his da'wah. Yet people living in Los Angeles have heard of Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i. People in Alaska have heard of Sheikh al-Albani. Because Ahlul Sunnah, these, this Ta'ifatul Mansura manifestly upon the truth. They are apparent for all to see. Ask the Khawarij you, your Sheikh. They say, Abu Abdullah al-Libi. Who? Abu Abdullah al-Libi. Who's Abu Abdullah al-Libi? Oh, we got another one. Who is it? Abu Abdurrahman al-Jazairi. Who? Man? Bring us the likes of Al-Albani. Bring us the likes of Muqbil. Bring us the likes of Bin Baz. Bring us the likes of Ibn Uthaymeen. Don't bring me Anwar al-Awlaki. Some deceived Amriki Yemeni fool who goes to Yemen and causes bloodshed and killing in Yemen. In, in a Muslim land, making halal the blood of Muslims, accusing the rulers being munafiqoon and whoever works for them are munafiqoon. These are ulama. These are sufahaul ahlam. Hudafaul asnan. They are foolish in their thought and youthful in their age. But they speak and you'd imagine that they are the, they speak with the best of the speech of creation. Who are the shiukh of al-awlaki? Tell me. Who did he study on? Bin Baz, Ibn Taymiyyah, Abdul Rahman Saadi? 
Al-Albani, Muqbil, who did he study under? Qutub. He said that I sat in prison and I read the tafsir of Sayyid Qutub so much so that I was so in, immersed into it that I thought that Sayyid Qutub was next to me in prison. That's his sheikh. A man who was executed in 1966. This guy who was born in 1974 or 72, he claims that he's, Sayyid Qutb's books were my influence. Who are your scholars? Bring us this hadith and show us who are your scholars. Because Imam Al-Tirmidhi said that this Ta'ifa, Imam Al-Tirmidhi said, who is this Ta'ifa? Ta'ifa Al-Mansura. Because in a narration, Al-Haq Mansurin, that they are aided upon the truth. So the Messenger of Allah said, they will never cease to, be, to remain in my Ummah. A group manifestly upon the truth every single generation. Every single, you give me a generation, we'll name you our ulama. Who are your ulama in this time? Some guy raised in America who decides one day I'm going to go to Yemen and make takfir upon every, any, any Bakr and Zayd that I see in the street so I can make their blood halal and declare all of the rulers to be kuffar and declare all of the scholars to be unbelievers. Because I read Sayyid Qutb when I was in prison and I thought that he was standing next to me. This is your Shaykh Al-Awlaki. Who are your ulama? Just like Ibn Abbas when he went to the Khawarij. He said, I have come from a group of people, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, amongst whom the Quran was revealed and I do not see any of them amongst you. These are our ulama. Abbas, Ibn Abbas. So who are yours? Where's your, where's your scholars? I am with the Sahaba. Who are you with? You Haruriya, who are you with? You Khawarij, when Abdul Ibn Abbas, who are you with? Who are your scholars? You couldn't, there's 15,000 of you who have, who had uh, encamped at Harura in the time of Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu when they declared him, to, they declared Ali to be a kafir. So Ibn Abbas went to see them, 10 to 15,000 in some narrations is mentioned. He said to them, I've come from the Sahaba. I don't see one of them amongst you. You couldn't convince one Sahabi to join your rank of 15,000? Daesh, ISIS, you couldn't convince one Alim to join you? They say, no, oh, no, we got a graduate from Riyadh. MashaAllah. You got more graduates from Riyadh in Trinidad than you have, but what graduate? That's an Alim because he rolls around with a certificate. Alim is not a man with a certificate. The ulama know the fadl of the ulama. Where are your ulama? You couldn't, you convinced two 16 year old girls to leave England to jump on a flight and go to die. They say, look, the girls are coming to us. MashaAllah. That's what you have. You can convince 16 year old boys and kids who have just stopped rapping and, and listening to hip hop and smoking weed in the streets and they jump on a flight from England to go to Syria or they jump on a flight from Trinidad to go to Syria and you say, look, they're coming to us, so we must be upon the haq. Because the rabble are coming to you and the fools are coming to you. The sufaha are coming to you. So that's your proof. Where are your ulama? Because so far you've done exactly what the khawarij in the time of Ali. لا تزال ضعيفة من أمتي. We know our ulama. Where are your ulama? Bring me al-albani. Bring me the likes of bin Baz. Bring me the likes of Rabi al-Madkhali. Bring me the likes of Ubaid al-Jabari. Bring me the likes of Salih al-Fawzan. Bring me the likes of Luhaydan. Bring me the ulama. Bring me the likes of Ibn Uthaymeen. In fact, bring me a hundred people who could equal to one Ibn Uthaymeen. And you couldn't do it. Imam al-Tirmidhi said, This ta'ifa hum ahlul athar wal hadith wal ilm. That this group that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that they will appear in every single generation, unharmed by those who abandon, who betray them, unharmed by those who oppose them. And they will remain as such up until the command of Allah comes. And they will remain upon that state, manifestly upon the truth. He said they are the people of narration, they are the people of hadith, they are the people of knowledge. So ISIS, Ataifatul Mansura, bring. Bring us that you are adhering to Usul Sunnah of Imam Ahmed. Show us how you are adhering when Imam Ahmed said that you do not rebel against the ruler. Bring me the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah. That you are upon the aqeedah of Ibn Taymiyyah, the manhaj of Ibn Taymiyyah. Don't lie upon him. 
Don't lie upon Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab gave his bay'ah pledge of allegiance to the first Saudi king. He gave his allegiance to the first king. The first Saudi king he gave his allegiance to Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, Sheikh al Islam, Rahimahullah. Then he gave his daughter in marriage to the son of Muhammad bin Saud, the first king of Saudi Arabia. Gave his daughter in marriage to his son, Abdul Aziz, who became the next king after him. Is this your manhaj? Because if anyone was to do that today, what do you say about the scholars who do that today? Oh, they are kuffar. They are in the hands and the pockets of the kings. They are Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, that they say, oh no, if you read Nawaqid al-Islam, then you will see you're reading Nawaqid al-Islam because you don't read nothing else from Shaykh al-Islam. Because you don't understand what he's saying in Nawaqid al-Islam. They don't understand. Wallahi, they don't understand. They don't understand even the meaning of Tawhut. Even with Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. These people, barakallahu feekum, are deceitful. These people are deceivers.